teaching please as I bring your word to your people this morning I ask that you open up our minds to receive, open our hearts to receive your word. We are grafted by God that is able to save us, deliver our soul, that is able to transform our minds, give us understanding. For the entrance of your word, give your light and understanding to the simple. Do this again and again in our life this morning. And let all glory belong to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you this morning. Are you excited to be in church this morning? To celebrate Jesus. Put those hands together with Jesus. Or you are catching cold. And you the cold that is catching. Celebrate Jesus one more time. Take all that cold. Amen. Jesus is winning. Amen. Amen. We've been on the series titled Destiny Pillars. And this is part four. Just a little recap, in the first week we saw a pillar of a dynamic element relationship with the Holy Spirit and we said the Holy Spirit is the author and the writer, the producer. Just like in the, in the movie industry you have the producer, the executive producer and the director of a movie. The Holy Spirit is the executive producer, the producer and also the director of the movie called Your Destiny. So a relationship with him will enable you to know what to do part time. It will afford you guidance, it will also give you direction. It will take you to places you never have seen before. We saw that in the first week, and we said we must all embrace a dynamic relationship with the Spirit of the living God. Week number two, we saw the pillar of vision. I mean, we said in this kingdom, all that we will ever have is a function of our sight. God said to Abraham, Genesis 13 from verse 15, when Lord was separated from him, now lift up thy eyes from the place where thou art. Look northward, westward, southward, and eastward. This place for all the land which thou seest be like deep deep. We start from verse 14. You see what I just quoted. And all the place which thou seest be like deep to thee. And thy seed forever. And those places you saw became the land of Israel. And even beyond the land of Israel, you see that even the three major religions of the world today, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, reference Abraham as their father, as a major force of such religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, we said, anything you don't see coming, never comes. The capacity to see is what differentiates humans from the animals. A dog only has the eyesight. Eyesight is common. The eyes that look are many, but the eyes that see in a man, in a heart, are few. You can be, we can be looking at the same situation, but somebody is seeing opportunity, and that person is seeing liability. This rain now is an advantage for some people. They know they are going to bring out the pursuit and sell. And why? Boy, people will buy. You can't be selling cold water inside this rain. Nobody will buy. Nobody wants to die. An opportunity for some people, a liability for some people. Oh, I can't go out. For the company that makes the raincoat or the umbrella, what is it for them? An opportunity. This is rainy season. The demand for umbrellas, will it go up or down? Of course it will go up, but that is the season. So what is a problem for some becomes an opportunity for others. All that matters is sight. What do you see? And we did it, we saw the pillar, that was last week, the pillar of what? Discipline. Oh. Discipline is the engine room of destiny. You can only rise to the degree of your self-discipline. And we said discipline is the capacity to put yourself under pressure so that the precious things in you can come out. I gave the example of the blast furnace, the, the, the metal, if you want the best from a metal, uh, all you need to do is to introduce it to a blast furnace, high degrees, 
thousand degrees of temperature and pressure. And before you know, the oil from the metal, the dirty material, the impurity, are melting off as a result of high temperature and pressure. And the precious metal without impurity begins to come out. The same thing of the fractional distillation. The crude oil. Have you ever seen crude oil? If you have been to Bayesa or Rivers, you will have seen some crude oil. Maybe here where they are doing the extraction. Very ugly, smelly liquid. Semi liquid is not solid. The semi liquid is very thick. It's, it's ugly. It's not desirable. You can't put it into your car. You can't put it into your generator. Whether diesel gel or petrol gel, it's not useful to heat up. Ah, but let it pass through the fractional distillation. In chemistry, you were taught fractional distillation begins to separate the faction, the different factions of crude oil into different factions like diesel. Hmm? From diesel to kerosene, from kerosene to PMS, petroleum, motor spirits or petrol, then down to what again? To the gaseous forms. The gaseous form you begin to have things like the cooking gas. Then you also have the liquid form that will come out last. The gaseous will come first, the liquid will follow, the, the solid one will come out last. The asphalt, all the asphalt, asphalt residue, the one we use in making our road, it comes from the same peculiar crude oil. There are precious materials in us, there are precious anointings in us, but they will never come out until you yourself under the fire of discipline. The third example is our gold. That beautiful adorable gold on your on my wrist, on your ear, on your neck did not come out from the earth like that. It came out as gold or very raw. It's not adorable. It's not fine. You can even mistake it for ordinary stone. Hello? But when you take it to the to the to the furnace, high temperature and pressure, guess what? All the impurities in gold melt off. Even gold itself is melted off by that high temperature. Discipline does not seem good in the present. It is not palatable to fast. It is not palatable to do personal video. Thank God for corporate video. But personally, you wake up, the Holy Ghost wakes you up, and you begin to pray. It's not palatable, it's called discipline. It's not palatable to keep quiet when people are offending you and irritating you. You want to retaliate, you want to talk, but the Holy Ghost says, shut up, shut up, shut up. It takes discipline to be calm, even when you are so successful. You want to flaunt it. We were driving some, some days ago and uh, the policeman in front of us stopped some cars, allowed us to go. And when I looked back, I saw the caliber of guys coming out. Of course, they were Yahoo boys. The dressing, the loud music, the loudness around them, we always betray them. Any little money, they want to show it. Somebody is having 50,000 naira in his account. Everybody must know. 500,000 naira, 5 million naira. He has gotten to the top of the world. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot be normal again just because of five million men. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there is something called discipline. You are so wealthy, but nobody knows. You are so great, so influential, but you, your head is still normal. It's still calm. It takes discipline. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you must enjoy and get to the end of your destiny with joy, like Paul the Apostle and Jesus and some of the men in the Bible, you must embrace discipline. It takes discipline to delay gratification for a young girl to say, no, I will not lose my virginity cheaply. I will keep myself for my husband. You pay now so that you can play later. But in discipline, we say, no, you are old-fashioned. Everybody is selling their opportunity. Why do you have to keep your own? There's, there's an allergy somewhere that will give you 200,000 if he can meet you as a, as, as a virgin. So why keep this nonsense? Like you are old school. You play now only to pay later. 
And for some of them, first encounter may be with HIV AIDS. Syphilis, gonorrhea. And some other, some, some, some other pain that will be with them for life. You will not fall victim. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we saw that testimony pillar last Sunday. I don't want to go into that again. This day, our subject of consideration is the pillar of relationship. And by next week, we will round it up by looking at the pillar of potentials. What you carry that will carry you to the top. I quoted that speaker last week, Proverbs 18, 16, technically. Proverbs 18, 16. The gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great men. A man's potential, a man's skill, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him. Your lift in life is in your gift. Don't despise it. In the parable of talent, Matthew 25, one was given five, one was given two, the other one was given one, and he was so angry. He was so bitter with his master. He went and buried that one talent. Who told you that 1,000 naira today cannot become 5,000 naira in two weeks' time if you know how to invest it? No gift is too small if you know what to do with it. Your neighbor's gift that you are that you are appreciating and you are you are envying. Stop envying people's gifts. Recognize your own. Your neighbor's garden is, is lush and green because on a regular basis your neighbor is doing something on his garden. If you will do something on your own garden, to who told you that your garden will not be better than your neighbor? You don't have to pray to have the gift of your pastor. Every one of us is gifted. There is something that God has given to you that he didn't give me. There's something he gave me that he didn't give you. So we are not meant to compete with one another. Rather, we should complement. In the area where I'm deficient, you support me. In the area where you are deficient, I'm supposed to support you. When hands, wash hands, and become clean. Imagine my right hand trying to wash itself, or my left hand is this. It is, it is not impossible, but it takes a longer time. I get what I'm saying. For imagine me washing my two hands with one another. It's easier, effortless, seamless. That is how life is supposed to be. The pillar of relationship. Genesis 12, verses 3 and 4. Let's take our history from Abraham, the father of faith. And I will bless God speaking to Abraham. Then that blessed thee. And I will curse him that cursed thee. And indeed, Abraham shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What a, what a massive blessing. So Abraham departed. You know the story in Genesis 12. God had told Abraham to depart from his one. Now God has told Abraham to depart from his father's house to a land that you show him. So Abraham obeyed, departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lord, underline that phrase, and Lord went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Iran. So the time you are starting does not matter. What matters is start. I know there's a benefit in starting early enough. But if you are not lucky enough to have started early, now is the right time. Every preacher, but now is the right time. Tomorrow may be too late. Start that business now. Start something today. Stop postponing joy to tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Now, Abraham had departed, but let's see what happened. Genesis 13, verse 2. When Abraham departed and Lord followed him, what happened? Genesis 13, verse number 2. Okay. Now, and Abraham was very rich in what? Cattle. Remember, in his father's house, he was a squatter. 75 year old man, still living with his father. That does not look like a success story. But as soon as he obeyed God and he departed from the hall of Tardis to the land that God showed him, the Bible says he became rich. You become better when you follow God's plan. You don't diminish, write it down. You don't become less or shadow of yourself following destiny. You become better following God's plan for your life. 
And Abraham was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Give me verse 5. What becomes of Lot who followed me? And Lot also. Hey, hey, say Lot also. On the line, Lot also. Who went with Abraham? Imagine. Had flocks, herds, and dead. Verse, verse 6 now. The last verse. And the land was not able to bear them. Remember in their father's house, they were living together. They didn't have much properties. They didn't have much influence. So there was so much space. But now, having obeyed God and having been blessed consequently by virtue of their obedience, look at what happened. The land could not contain the two of them anymore that they might dwell together. For their substance was great. Another word for greater is massive. So that they could not dwell together. Say, blessed by association. So, Lord was blessed by association. It was money. It was not Lord that God called. Hello? Who was, who was the person that God the call? Abraham. So, as Abraham was being blessed, guess what happened to Lord that followed? He also was being blessed. It's like the analogy of being on an aircraft. Have you ever been on an aircraft before and you are in the business class or the first class? In the business class, what the kind of treatment you are given is VIP treatment. Lagos to Paracord, Lagos to Abuja. Uh, the kind of seats is different. Space, massive space, you stretch, you can recline your seat. In the economy, no. If it is a Boeing 737 plane, and you have three, four seats here, then we have a middle, we have, we have an high, we have another four or five seats there. Very massive plane is Boeing 737, very big. But guess what? In the economy, the treatment is less of VIP. Amen. You can serve you cupcake and Rabina, bar, and small, small water juice, you know, those air hostesses. Water and juice, and I listen to what I give you. Juice, give, give, give you. In the business class, wow, better treatment. May you enjoy the good things of life. But that is not the point I'm driving at. The point I'm driving at is by the time we get to Abuja, all of us become dumb. They will say only business class because you paid more. We come down. The rest, we take it to Sokoto. We are looking for more, for more customer. We go around and come back. No. When the people in the business class are 20,000 feet above sea level in elevation, what happens to people in the, in, in, in the economy? They sell 20,000 feet to let you know. I get what I'm saying. When you follow right people, that's my message today. Any good thing that happens to them also happens to you. Proverbs 13 verse 20. What is scripture? Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now listen to this. This man is not a, yet a wise man. He's just walking with wise men. He's a protege. He's a mentee of wise men. He comes to service a wise pastor, a teaching priest. We speak to him. He goes to work. He see a very sharp businessman with nice business acumen. We speak to him or her. I mean, at home, he has a father, he has a mother full of wisdom. Everybody is pouring dosage of wisdom into his life on a daily basis. The Bible says, even though he's not yet wise, but he that walks, he's just walking with them. He's not wise at the beginning. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. It's a matter of time. What is on them begins to find expression on you because you choose to follow. Write this down. Association facilitate assimilation. One, association facilitate transportation. Heights that you yourself cannot get to. Because you are in a parachute, what happens? The parachute will carry you from a, a state of being rescued and it will bring you to the ground to rescue you. Association facilitates Transportation. As 
association also decides promotion. Who you associate with determines whether you will go up or you will go down. The prodigal son, Luke 15. Imagine the story of the prodigal son. When he was with his father, he had everything you can never take for. I mean, he had gold, he had fatter cow, he had clothes, he had designers, he had, he had everything. Are you getting me? The moment he left his father, because there's something called blessed association, that was what Lord forgot. Let me tell you, but don't forget. There's something called blessed association. Immediately the prodigal son forgot what happened. The Bible says he began, he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he began to live in riotous living, prodigal living. And before you know what was happening, in less than seven days, everything was down. One million naira minus one naira. Is this the one million naira? Minus hundred naira. Is this the one million naira? Minus one thousand. Is this the one million naira? Before you know what is happening, one million naira of last week becomes ten naira of today. That was what happened to the prodigal son. And all of a sudden, he looked for people to help him. Nobody. Where were the friends that he was fighting with last week? They are gone. Those are not friends. They are not friends. They are not good association. Many of us are where we are today because of certain people that joined our boat, like Jonah, several years ago. Thank God they didn't kill us, but they redeemed us drastically. But the reason for this message is for you to bounce back into a right association so that you can be where God has obtained you to be. The prodigal son had to turn himself to a pig, to swine. He was feeding swine and he would desire to eat of their food. He was dragging food with pigs. It was that bad. May you not fall from grace to grass. Hmm. Don't understand that prayer. I will not fall from grace to grass. In my relationships, in associations of destiny, I will not fall from grace to grass. I wrote in my notes, destiny thrives on relationships. Destiny ah, thrives, survives, succeeds on relationships. Nobody can fulfill destiny alone. Destiny, your destiny, my destiny, will require the input of other people or other destinies. No single destiny thrives in isolation. You may develop your gifts on the mountain, but you can't use it on the mountain. You must come to the valley where people are. Hello? One of our pastors in CAC, one of our great prophets in CAC, used to say this. He said it to Yoruba, I will interpret. He said, Ibu Igo Latin Barbara, Igoro Latin Lo. You can't use your power in the bush now. He said, we collect power from the forest, from the mountain top. I've never been to certain mountains in the southwest. They are not on the main road, though. You have to enter. Sometimes even when you drop on the road, they will not, you will not take a bike. Sometimes 500 naira bike on certain several kilometers to get to the Koyi mountain. The Dua Jinori, all those mountains. Counting 1,000 and something steps. 600 something steps. When you come down, you come with power. But you manifest that power, not on the mountain, in the midst of people. So people are vital. You are a businessman. People are the ones that will pay you. You can't be a successful businessman or woman by not acknowledging the impute of people. Follow me. Relationship. What are relationships? Relationships are advantageous connections in life and destiny. Hmm. Relationships are advantageous, advantageous connections in life and destiny. It's not just connection, it has advantage. It is beneficial. It's not parasitic, it is mutually beneficial. Who you company with determines what accompanies you. Listen to that. Who you choose to follow determines what follows you. <laughs> Who you associate with determines what is associated with you, whether success, influence, or failure, or poverty. Come again. Who you choose to follow determines what follows you. Who you company with determines what we accompany you. 
I'm here to go to Jerusalem. But recently, my father and the Lord and some friends in ministry went a few weeks back. And they came back and they brought her in this home. The same blessing that I would have gotten going, they brought that does not stop me from still going in my own time. But your association determines what is associated with you. Listen to this. And I want you to look at this. Anytime God wants to bless a man or shift a man's status, he sends another man. God blesses man by using man. Satan knows the same trick or the same principle. Satan steals from a man by sending a man to him. Satan was going to steal the strength from Samson. Who did he send? An angel. No, Delilah. He was going to steal from Joseph. He sent Potiphar's wife. Be careful who comes to your life. I'm going to be explaining that shortly. It is either they are sent by God or orchestrated by Satan. Nobody comes to your life for fun. Everybody in your life is on a mission. You must identify them. As I'll be showing you shortly. So, men are God's method of change in life and destiny. Anytime God wants to orchestrate a change in the place, He brings men. Therefore, to lack men is to lack something great in life. To lack men is to be stranded. You will recognize and you will appreciate with me this morning that certain blessings in your life will not have been possible if it is for God alone. Hello? God has done everything in Christ. He has given you Jesus Christ. However, angels begin to begin to scout for men that they can minister to to bless you. That is why relationship is powerful. You must not just discover them. You must know how to maintain. I'll be teaching us how to maintain relationship. This has worked for me for many years. It is one thing for people to come into your life. It's another thing for you to open your door for them. For some people, for some of us, the life cycle of any profitable relationship is just two years. And they ask you, ah, uh, it's the people that have problem now. It's not me. You have problem. Hello. One of our brothers here was with me yesterday. Investor, friends of over 1998 to date. How many years now? That's 20, 25 years. I mean, 25 years we are still together. One of them was to start a ministry yesterday and have to go. Not because I'm going to minister per se, but I have to do my solidarity. 25 years relationship is not for God. Hello? Hello? If the life cycle of profitable association, profitable friendship, profitable relationship in your life is one year old, when you look at your life, you can't remember, you can't have you can't trace people that have been in your life in the last 10 years. All in the guys that uh, they are demonic, they are witches and wizards. They are, they are not good. They are bad people. Something is wrong somewhere. You lack relationship wisdom. There is a wisdom for wealth. There is also another wisdom for relationship. You are going to be learning something. To lack men is to make a mockery of destiny. Are you a pastor? Are you a businessman? Are you a housewife? Are you a mother? Are you a father? To lack profitable men is to be grounded in life. Is to be grounded. I heard the story from Dr. Paul Eliche, a great mentor. He said, himself and his friend, I know that friend. I've worked with him before. Himself and his friend were traveling to Abuja from Lagos and they go to the airport, you know, how people uh, sit at the boarding gate and they begin to discuss and begin to, to chat away until they announce their flight. And all of a sudden, he, he looked at the ticket of his friend, economy, and his own. And he just said, oh, was business class? said, no, 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 this amateurs must continue in the plane. And he ordered for another ticket for his friend, right there and there. The people in your life determine your pace, your influence. To lack men, please, I'm angry this morning. Because many of us should have been blessed beyond this, but for lack of relationship wisdom. 
God brings them by mercy, by the anointing, by favor. But we will, with our folly, we send them away and we, and we keep blaming God. Somebody will say, Ah, Pastor, why, how come you have the number of Halaji, Alaja on your phone? Are they not human beings? Stay there. Stay there. No wonder you are like this. I can master like you have never had Alaji. And you have got Alaji, Alaji. I want this dollar. Can't you preach Jesus to him? You go and preach now. To be the one to preach. You go and do the preaching now. Amen. I see, I am the converter. Hello? I don't know the gospel we received that told us that you must not associate with any other religion. And many of us came from families where our fathers are native doctors. You won't tell us that one. It is a lie you be fighting with us. Are you getting the point? I'm not saying we should be on unequally yoked with unbelievers, but the Bible says follow peace with all men, not with all Christians. This is relationship. The person that we sign, that we approve your visa, if you get to the embassy tomorrow, may not be a born again Christian, but he or she has the right to say, with this proof of fund, I don't think you can go to America. I reject you. We use regulating. He is standing with the authority of the embassy, the authority of that country, in another country. Humans matter. Men and women can change your story in a heartbeat for good or for better or for the worse. Let me move on fast. I wrote in my notes here for emphasis sake five things that the people in your life will determine for you. By experience, I have seen this. So listen to me. I know what I'm saying here. Five things that the people in your life, the profit, the, 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 the quality relationship in your life will deliver to you. Do you want to know them? Can I tell you? Number one, the event, the people in your life determine the event of your life. Whether you are going to see problem every day, and you are going to be on the mountain top fasting and praying every day, or you are going to fast and pray and joy. Amen. You can use all your lifetime to fight back to sleep. And you can use your lifetime to rest. It's a choice. And it's a function of the people in your life. Picture with me Jonah. You know the story of Jonah in your Bible studies? Now, imagine Jonah in the boat with those guys. On that day, some of those mariners will have told their wife, I'm coming back in seven days' time. I've bought your shoes. I will buy gold. Guess what happened? Jonah entered. They didn't plan for Jonah to enter, but Jonah entered because the events of your life are determined by the people in your life. Jonah entered, and all of a sudden there was storm because somebody has the curse of God upon his life. May you not complain with such people. You will struggle unnecessarily when you have a Jonah as your employer or employee. God is angry with your boss. And guess what? You think it will not affect you? Anything that that man touches, anyone that he has influence over, will suffer. How did God show mercy this morning? Amen. Jonah, in the boat, all of a sudden there was storm. Boys trust seas everywhere. And guess what? As mariners, they have experience. They began to lighten up the boat. Oh, the shoe I bought for my wife, she it. The trinkets, the diamond. The Lord, they were doing. You think they don't need those things? If they didn't need them, they wouldn't have bought them. But because of a donor in their life, they have to lose their things. The event of your life will be determined by the people in your life. Good or bad. Number two, because of my time. The people in your life determine the pace of your life, the speed. How fast you will get certain things. Was it not Esau and Jacob, twins? They, their father just told one of them, Esau, go and get me venison, that my soul may bless you. And because of the influence of, what's another name now, Rebecca, I think? Rebecca on Jacob, the, the person in his life, said, don't worry, you don't need to go far. 
I have it at the back there. I will do it. There is a way your father loves his soul. I know. I've been married to him for the last 40 years. I will do their soul for you. Influence of somebody in, in his life. And if so, nobody in his life. Why to the bush? May you not suffer in vain, no? Yeah. Do you know the skill it takes to kill an animal? You think the animal is, was, was waiting for you, so yeah, kill me, kill me, kill me. Which animal is it? They too love life now. He had to run. If he shoots, if he missed target. Imagine the hours wasted. No one, I mean, not knowing that somebody at home has already received the person. Baba did Jeff, Baba has eaten their soul, he has licked his fingers. And you are still looking for the goat, the, the, the white animal, the bush meat to kill. The people in your life determine the place. How fast you get something is a function of who is with you. I know this like I know the back of my hand. There are many times in the church we have projects. And somebody will say, Pastor, don't announce that. Say, don't worry, I will send the money to you tomorrow. We announce on Sunday, and by tomorrow Monday, a man has said it is done. I've seen that many times. Imagine what it takes to convince people in this economy to contribute money. Oh well, yeah, all the men pay. You know what, what, what is going on? All the men pay. All the women pay this. Some people will still not pay. It's a law. It's a fact. What? They will have tangible reasons to present. But may God bless you with the right people. Amen. One person that is far bigger than 100 people. One person, Israel, Jacob, that is equal to a nation. May God not make you lack such men. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The speed or the pace of your life is a function of the quality of people you have in your life. Number three, they determine the profit or the loss of your life. Whether you are going to be profitable or you are going to be losing any money that enters your hand. Why? You have a sick child is in your life. So any hundred thousand that comes in is going to drugs. I, I sympathize with family with such and I pray that the mercy of God will speak for you. That child will no longer be a devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. Imagine somebody getting his gratuity and that is when cancer comes. You know what it means to maintain cancer? You know, you know the cost of chemotherapy? alone, the emotional pain, that you are the cancer patient at home, may you not see it in the name of Jesus Christ. The people in your life, the profits for the gain or the loss. Number four, the power. <laughs> you may not be that powerful, but you are connected to a man of God. Hello? You are under a prophetic covering that is sharp and sensitive. The power, the anointing, the influence, those three things of your life is a function of the people in your life. If everybody in your life is a Yahoo boy, and and all that, imagine the influence level so low. Nobody is a graduate in your family. Imagine the influence level so low. Nobody has ever entered a, an aeroplane. And the story they talk is taken into the two. Abuja, you say, Abuja is sweet when you are traveling on road. Ten hours, you don't be watching movie, ah, home video, they will still look at it, and you are wondering, ah, what a lie. Let the same person come inside the aircraft and spend 15 minutes to Abuja. And knows that life is dimensional. All that you have seen about like 12 hours on the road can be simplified to 15 minutes on the road. Even less if the, if the aircraft is smaller. Are you getting what I'm saying? The power, the anointing, the influence of your life is a function of who is in your life. Number five, the wisdom or the folly of your life is a function of who you are in your life. Imagine having a professor in your family. Imagine having somebody with PhD and is always guiding you as a young student in secondary school. Imagine having senior ones that are graduates. Many of us will have not been where we are today if we are not the first one. Maybe if we are the third or the last one, and we have senior ones that have gone to university. Many of us will have gone to school. But unfortunately, we, we have people ahead of us that we say school, we school. There's nothing in school. Have your money, have money. And you're wondering which money are you talking about? 
they will tell you, look at Brother so The example they have ever given you or they will ever give you are failures. People that have gone to school that do not get jobs after 20 years. They, they don't have reference of those that went to school and they got jobs. They didn't have any job. The wisdom of your life. When you open your mouth, what comes out is a function of who is speaking. That is why who has your ears matters. Who speaks to you? Who you listen to on a continual basis matters a great deal. If all you hear, it is impossible. If all you hear until you are in Lagos and you can't you can achieve anything in Lagos, go away, go away, and they keep telling you that, and you know you are from the east. You are from the southwest, you are from the north, and you're like, ah, that means I can't take anything. It's true. See how much you are buying petrol. See how much, and you begin to see reason by yourself. See how much you are paying for labor. See how much you are paying for this bill. See how much you are spending on data. Who taught you that rubbish? In the same Lagos, last week I still dedicated one, one, oh my God, one beautifully, tastefully furnished bungalow in Lagos for a family here. And I was like, what? And this man will be doing there, like, as if there is nothing. Look at what he has put on the ground. Awesome building. I said, Pastor, when God blesses, I said, God will bless you more. This is not the, this is not the best. You will still have more. I was provoked to pray more. But you live among people and say, which ah, house? There is no more land in Lagos. He said, we go to Ifo. Who told you? Beside your house, the landlord that want to sell the house. Many of us are living in house that even the landlord has sold the house now. And they have, they've run away. And you are now praying, Lord, talk the house of the new buyer. Mm. It's time for you to begin to see better life. It's a function of who is speaking to you. Sometimes you have to close your ears to naysayers. People that don't see anything good in life. You say, good money. You say, what is good about this money? Nigeria is terrible, Nigeria is bad. Ask the person who says Nigeria is bad. Do you, have, do you have an international passport? He doesn't have. So, what is your hope? If you keep confessing that Nigeria is bad and you are not planning to travel out, do, do you still want to remain in a bad place? Are you getting my point? The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. The next point How do I maximize relationship? Pastor, having said all this, how do I, I've seen the benefits of relationship, how do I maximize, and I will stop here, how do I maximize my relationship? How do I keep relationships? How do I keep profitable people? Hello? Somebody gave you 5,000 naira yesterday. Does that mean he can't give you again and again and again and again and again? But there's something you can do to that man. Give you 5,000 naira yesterday. Today, you don't even remember to say thank you. When you say thank you, you just send a text. Thanks. Somebody paid your school fees last week as a student. Your uncle, you have this, this entitlement mentality. He's my uncle now. Since my father died, he, he should be the one thing that who told you. And all you will say, thanks. T H T M T K S. Just abbreviate for T K S. Thanks. Not even sir. Not man. We say no problem. What's your name? What's your name? With our with our with our folly, we have shut the doors. When I pray this morning, may your heart receive new wisdom. How do I maximize relationship? Destiny relationship. Number one, give me Proverbs 18 24. Be to people the kind of person you want them to be to you. Be to people the kind of person you want them to be for you or to you. Or be to people what you want them to be for you. I get it. Or another way of saying it: sow the seed to the lives of people <laughs> of the harvest you want to reap in your own life. You don't want people to carry fake rumor about you. Don't carry it about other people. Matthew 5, okay, let me read this one. A man that had friends, look at this description, so no more speaking, must show himself friendly. This guy, you look at this guy, you go, Pastor, sir, man, how do you do it? People, we always rise for you, cut out your shame. You don't see shame. What is your secret? The 
keep the secret. You must, if you want to have friends, relationship in your life, you must show yourself friendly. That was the last time you remember somebody's birthday apart from your own. Even on the platform, there are people on our platform have been finding ways to, to execute and to remove them now. If it is prayer, their aim is always loud and big. They will use animations and stickers. But to greet another person happy birthday, their mouth and their fingers are too heavy to type. What a dangerous way to live. And they are the one that will say, Pastor, you didn't remember yesterday was my birthday. Hey, God bless you, I didn't remember. You should have reminded me too. I am not Google now. Have you? Uh, ministry is growing. You guys need to remember to, to be remembering everybody. If you see me post anybody's birthday, they, they contacted me a day before. Get it now. They contacted me a day before. How many things to think about now? I get what I'm saying. It's not pride. But do you know something? When ministry was smaller than this, I had plenty time. I will know. I will write. I wrote it somewhere. I will always go there. I don't have that type of thing. Somebody will be doing that for me. But I've discovered people that we often miss their friends are the ones that don't greet anybody at the day. It's a seed you sow, you must get the harvest. Give me Matthew 5 verse 7. <laughs> Matthew 5 verse 7. Shebe le me na pora. Go for who's the bar. Skepila moro to go for pora. Pishno vakila pari. Blessed are the merciful. Get the reward. For they shall obtain mercy. How many of you love to pray for mercy? I love it too. But the Bible tells us, beyond prayer, for mercy, be merciful. Mercy is a seed whose harvest you will always reap. Somebody is stranded. You see somebody begging for harm. Always at your around your street. You know this person is not faking it. This person is not pretending. If it is under there, give, give, give that person anything you have it. Don't say he's not my church member. I don't even know him. One day I'm, I am going to teach you on the mystery of arms giving. There's something God told me by experience. I learned by experience on arms. There are certain levels of anointing that I've entered into. Certain levels of grace and, and, and mercy. And I have walked in by virtue of giving arms. I do it in front of my children. I will park my car. I will say, yeah, go and give that car. They are here, they are to me. I will, I will tell you so that they too will learn. Daddy doing this. There's something that is is saying there. And you get what I'm saying? They know they are not in our church. No, they are not in our church. I can't, I can't, I can't give them. The one in your church, did, did you see them? Church. Church. Be to people what you want them to be for you. Sow the seed into others of the harvest you want to reap in your own life. Did you get that? You want God to help you? Help somebody. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. My good have said that many years ago. Write it down. Whatever you make happen for others, God will ensure He makes it happen for you. It's a law. In the secular one, they call it the law of karma. What goes round comes. What goes round comes around. That's right. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So be to people. Proverbs 18, 24 again. Help me with that scripture. He that has friend will show himself. Neighbor. Look at the second part of that scripture. But there is a friend that sticks closer than the brother. There are things I want to do in my life. I don't even discuss with my siblings. I know there are four, four boys, two girls. Many of them don't know the plan I have. But there is a friend in UK. We've been in Nigeria. We've been we on campus the same year, 1990, 2002. We were in the same hostel, slept on the same bed for four years. There is nothing he wants to do. Even now in UK, he will contact me. There's nothing that if I'm traveling, he knows. I'm really somewhere, I told him. Many of my students may not even know because there is a friend that still gets closer. You want such friend in your life, be like that to people. And not for praying for destiny helpers. Have you been a destiny helper for some people? You see why God does not answer some of the prayers? Because we are violating principles. We are what? Violating principles. You want God to send destiny here past your life, but you are cutting people's destiny short. Amen. 
Imagine a woman that runs a hotel. How many, many girls that are prostitutes in a hotel? And it's going, let my daughters in UK find help. Can that be the answer? You are ruining the lives of innocent girls in Benin, in Nigeria, in Lagos. And you want your daughters in Australia or UK or whatever they are to find help. Ah, man, what you sow, it does not matter when and where. It's a law. You want people that will stick close to you. Say, Pastor, if you perish, we perish. If you go down, we go down. You will never go down. We will hold your hands. I have such by his grace in my life. Do you have such in your life? This is the key. Have you been like that to some people? I told you. I was not a minister in first time, but I took that program as if it is my program. And I went. I didn't come back empty and dead as God would have it. Because what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Hmm. How do I manage relationship? Number two, this is very, very key. I have discovered that certain people will want to take advantage of you as your relationship. This wisdom number two, I have known it for years as I've been working for you. Proverbs 8, 27 to 29. I will teach you. It's called create deliberate boundaries around your life. Ha ha! Hey, then you are a Christian or you are not a Christian, does not matter. If you don't have boundaries in your life, people will mess you up. And at the end of it, they, they, they will even abuse you, friends. Family members will do it, church members will do it, office people will do it, anybody on your street will do it. You must create boundaries. Look at the wisdom of God. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. Look at, look at the wisdom of spirit. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, look at the Atlantic Ocean. Everything. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains, how many of you know that what, what we call the cloud is water vapor? Water is there. When it's 100%, immediately, then it comes as a rainfall. Okay. Give me verse 29. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandments, it's called boundaries. When he appointed the foundations of the heart, verse 30, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. What point am I trying to make here? Imagine, sometimes it will rain, as if it rain will not stop today, but in the wisdom of God there has been a regulation. Boundaries is what we call regulations, control. Imagine having a beautiful car, eight blocks, you know, 8 plus car, V8, very powerful engine that can go up so much work. Amen. But no brakes. Is that not suicidal? Boundaries. Create boundaries around your life. Are you into a healthy relationship? Create boundaries. That is why you can't just call some people and you pick your call. It's a boundary. Deliberately, they are put in their life. I don't pick straight numbers. I'm not, I'm not of myself. They will tell you, if you want to call me, send me a text first, put your name there. When I see that, that call, I will know you are the one. It's a boundary. Why? They have been taken advantage of before. It is a nature of human beings to always abuse relationships. The prodigal son abuses. Imagine Judas. Judas, Jesus that you have seen perform miracles, do excellently well. You sold Jesus. Thinking in your head that he will deliver himself and you will make the way with 30 pieces of silver. You sold Jesus. Imagine the brothers of Jesus, the brothers of Joseph, selling Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. Your own blood brother. People know they are masters in abusing and messing up people's lives. My advice for you, don't allow anybody to mess up your life. Create boundaries. Can I be practical with you? That was sometimes a member will call me, Pastor, can I come and see you now? And I take my time. After 8 p.m. You can't come. I'm sorry. Let's talk on you. Ah, I need to. I said, I can't. You can't. There's a family time. I'm a family man, but kind of loud. And I know you. You will come. You will want to go. You will see us watching Z1. Ah, Pastor, you watch Z1. Ah, you will sit down. And Z1, of course, you know Z1. When you start watching until you finish one hour, you want to stand up. Why somebody now stay with me for one hour in the What are you looking for? 
Or I'm watching football, maybe on the Saturday or the Sunday, say, Pastor, I want to say, no, you can't say anything. I'm busy. Now, what is the busy? Mm. Thank you. Amen. Create boundaries. Or you call me at certain hours of the night and you expect me to pick the call. I'm praying. If I'm not praying, I'm studying. If I'm not studying, I'm sleeping. Is it a time to sleep? No. Respect my boundaries. Have you not noticed in your house, your bedroom, no matter how, how, how anointed you are, you don't, you don't bring anybody to your bedroom, right? No matter even your church members, you are, you are colleagues, they don't come to your bedroom. Have you noticed that what separates the bedroom from the living room are doors and walls? They are called boundaries. If you stand above the house and, and there is no roof, you see everything, have you? Because there are, there are no walls and doors that in that area. But when you're on the ground, what separates secret of your life from general public domain? Walls and doors. It's called boundaries. Create boundaries. Let people know this, you can't get me here. This, I can't come here. It's like saying, Pastor, I want to see you. I'm at a poolside of one hotel, and I know that hotel is a very reckless hotel. Yahoo boys are always swimming with their girlfriends. And me now as a pastor, I'm not going to sit by a poolside with you, watching almost naked girls on a Saturday. I said, sir, can we reject you? It's not because anything. I don't want to fall like that. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that you are, you are, you are, what you see affects your heart? You have to meet in your eyes. It's going to be, oh, you For sure. You know, whoa. So it's better for me not to go there. Ah, pastor is too proud. Oh, he said you should come to poolside. Poolside, is it temple? Is it sanctuary? Boundaries. Say boundaries. You see, if you allow anything goes in your life, you can't go far. It's like driving a car, very powerful engine, but no brakes. Ah! Oh my jam. You will not jam. In the name of Jesus Christ. I wrote something here. In relationship, it is important to create empty boundaries. It's healthy, healthy boundaries around your life. Faith, F-A-T-E, may bring many people into your life at random. Boundaries will help you decide who stays and who does not. Imagine everybody in this church, because I'm your pastor, you want to come to my house at the same time. Amen. Ah, it's our pastor's house, so we must all come, we must all come home. After Sunday service, boom. And mom will say, ah, really? After first time, she's cooking for everybody. You might want to kill her. Second time. And guess what? To know that people can mess you up. Many of those people come into your house after service. They're not bringing rice. Home. They won't bring drink home. You still prepare food. You still do all that. And they love the first week. Second week is sweet. Third week, they will even call you. They will just knock your door. We are the after today. But they come to the first week, sir. When next you are coming to our call me. You are stay. You are not smiling. You call me when you are coming to me. I'll call like nobody will open the gate for you. They see the seriousness. It's a boundary. People will talk. They have said I'm proud. And I, and I agree. You do won't understand now until you get to where I am. Boundaries. 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 Do you understand this teaching of boundaries? I'm not saying all should now password is phone. See, wife, no. All my children can, can assess my phone. They know the password. They know everything. They know the password. I'm not thinking of that one. I mean, sometimes I will joke with my dad. Everything I have, you have access to. Even my ATM, you know my face. They know. I don't like that. Oh, team or not. Amen. But for strangers to be knowing your pain to your ATM, there's no boundary in that. Some things should just be, should just be confidential to you. Everybody knows what is going on in your family part time. And we are church members. It does not matter. It does not matter if you are church members. There must be boundaries. Say boundaries. boundaries. And number three, respect boundaries in relationship with others. When you create boundaries, respect it in other people's life. As your pastor, I can't come to your house without calling you. It's a, it's a, it's a respect I have for you. Hello? When was the last time you saw me in your house? Hello? When was the last time you saw me in your house? So 
some of you is one year ago. I mean, some of you, 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 you can't even remember. It's because I respect boundaries. We, if I keep coming to your house every day, my senior person first gave me the example one day. He said, when you just tap you to a to, to a member's house, anyhow, the first day they will treat you and they give you more. Multi girls. They will they will entertain you. Second day, again, Sunday again, you have come again. Okay. From water Guinness, you drop down to Pepsi or Coke. No water, no food. Third day, water. No, Sobo. Fourth week, water. Week five, they will be looking at you. Pastor Chetty, Lord. When they are asking you, Pastor Chetty, Lord, you know you have a ticket. Respect boundaries. Or they are beginning to sweep. And you are sitting there. And they are beginning to sweep. Why you are there? You are going to your boundaries. Respect boundaries. Maybe you have. No, I have noticed this amongst younger people. You have the phone number of a friend that is doing so well. He's a millionaire. You are still trusting God. Don't call him every day. Have you noticed? When you keep calling every day, after a while they will block your number. They will see if they will not be. And you are wondering, God, touch the heart of this man to pick my call. Wisdom is not there. There's a way you manage great people. They love to be treated like kings and queens. Treat them like one because you will be one someday. I know he was your classmate, and you now is the commissioner in Lagos State. You now say you are slapping his hand, you are, you are, you are calling him his nickname. I used to call him in school in those days. Uh, uh, boundaries now. This man is not a commissioner, he's not a governor. You are a brother in the church. Hello? That is not the title you are, sister, brother. And this man is a governor in Lagos State. Respect boundaries so that he can bring you up. Hello? Because if you don't respect that new status, you say, well, let's go ahead. It's, it's a nuisance. It's a charlatan. And then let him just remain something. Recognize your limits in your involvement with others. There are people in this church I have spoken to. Begin to do this. Live your life this way. But if they say no, can I kill them? I know my limit as a pastor. I'm not God. I'm just man of God. But I'm talking about man. So uh, you can never see me fighting with any church member. I've seen pastors in Lagos before that flood people, that burn people. If you are if you are over 40, you know that story. The pastor burned church members. No, go on. Bring out broom and flood them, flood the devil out of their bodies. No, you're living. For Boko. For Boko lies their lives. Know what? Your limits. Respect boundaries. What number are we? Number four now, right? Number four now. I will stop here because of time. Enter into every relationship with a contribution mindset. Hello? Enter what? Every relationship. Relationship with your parents, with your siblings. There must be something you are contributing. Don't be a taker. Be a giver. Do you know the problems with takers? And the people hear that you are coming, they shut their doors. As a pastor, I am not a taker from anybody. Why? As I'm supplying the anointing and the grace of God upon my life and praying for people and standing in God for them, they do what they do. Somebody saw me one day and said, ah, We've been sitting here for almost 30 minutes. You have been the only one we're sitting at last. And I will go and call God to call you. I said, No, 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 no. That will be in this call. Because we all know that you are not a pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I say, are you pastors are the one enjoying now? He said, yeah. When they are fasting and praying, when they are having challenges, you are not there. Just because you saw three or four alerts now, I say, you want to become a pastor. It's not like that. Enter with a contribution mindset, not an entitlement mindset. What does that mean? Be there for people when they need you. Contributory. Be a contributor to people's life. Be an asset and not a liability to people's lives. Relationship thrives and lasts 
when both parties are contributing. Did you get that? I'm bringing something to the table. You are bringing something to the table. A pastor is bringing something to the table. Members are bringing something to the table. That is what makes it mutual. But imagine if it is only members that are bringing something to the table. They are not getting blessed. Their lives are not transformed. Their prayers are not, their prayers are not being answered. What happened? They say, no, this pastor is just coming out. I mean, there must be something you are contributing. It may not be money, don't get me wrong. But I'm that rich man in your family is celebrating birthday. You don't even have money to buy gifts. Call him. Send gifts. Send, send, send well wish to him. Send lovely message to him. So honor, honor. There is nobody that has been trained to reject it. Show honor. Hello? Hello? Now you see what relationship lasts in some people's life and it disappears in some other people's life. It's a function of what we know. What we know is what makes us to be known. Hello? To know more is not to mourn more. Not to know more is to mourn more. It's to weep, it's to cry. Some prayers become unnecessary when you know better. I just taught you on destiny now. An empath of destiny. There is nobody you will celebrate like this, you will relate with like this, that will not remember you in your trouble time. Because when they are in trouble, you remember them. I said jokingly sometimes, and I meant it, and that's the truth, God knows my heart. There are people that when I see their missed call, I call them five times. Hello? So I see your missed call, I will go call you back. Why? I rate people in my it's part of the boundaries I was taught. I rate people in my life by virtue of their contribution to my life, not because how long you have been in my life. What is your contribution to my life? Are you helping the program of God in my hand or you are you are hindering it? Come to church, you won't come. And you are the first to complain. Uh, pastor does not look for us. When you won't come to church. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Lord will give us wisdom. The Lord will help us. From today, relationship will thrive in your life. Amen. You won't have destiny and pass from only to disappear. Do you know the reason why people spend one, finish spending before, after three months, another one will be coming? This is the rule now. Whenever money comes to your hand, who do you remember? Nobody except yourself. Balenciaga, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, all those designers, as if you are in a covenant with them. <laughs> Thank you. You know all their names. When money now comes, ah, first of all, who is it to The money you, you did not even remember to pay tithes for. Yeah, who is it to Who is it to Who is it to go? Even if it's not that million, it's with English now. Hey, Amen. I receive wisdom. I receive wisdom. Say, I receive wisdom. Start practicing it from today. There are people in your life now that you need to start taking seriously. Not everybody in your life is equal. Don't make that mistake. Hello? Look, there are people that call me. I'm on the road. I will sleep in. But they don't just call anyhow. It can be an emergency. But you are calling me to this or to report somebody. I see your call 10 times. I will not pick once. Why? Because I know it's gossip. I know it's useless complaints. I don't, I don't have time. Don't distract my vision. I you getting what I'm saying? So you want to be close to certain great people? This is the way now. God will never be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will be Christ your faith. Give him praise for what he has done to you. Appreciate it. I want to pray for us now for help. Rest your faith. Allah man no so friend he had to shiva power. Pray the Holy Ghost for me. Pray the man for the Holy Ghost. Rabo so friend he had to shiva power. I receive wisdom to manage resources. Human resources in my life. Alamato so pretty hard to shiva power. Gelemendo so pretty hard to be a fool. A gogo papa papa so pretty a bad head of rope. A separate pila papa and a bosco papa. So I is a wisdom. I will see you in the world. I will see you in the world. I will see you in the world. I will see you in the world.